Streamers everywhere, welcome to the Dueling Disney Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Andy Zelmerman. And I'm the other one of your hosts, Al Day. How you doing? Um, since I haven't seen you in a whole almost 48 hours. I know. Tired. So like, I, like 36 hours. I am so sleepy. Uh, for our for our listeners and our viewers, we were we were just at Disneyland. Like you, this time yesterday, I was at Disneyland. And yep. uh, got back last night, and then my dog woke me up at 5 a.m., so that's why you see the luggage under my eyes. And I'm just plain old tired. My dog even slept in, and I'm plain old tired. We were there for Andy's birthday. Happy mm-hmm. birthday. Thank you. Um, 60 looks good on you. That's funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hilarious. Um, But I will tell you that um, we had the Quince, Quince, Quintus... Quintus Say that word for me. Quintessential. Quint- Quintanera? No. Uh, Quintessential? Yes. Uh, old people's trip to the Disney parks, I will mm-hmm. say. That is so funny. We'll get into that a little bit. Um, but I will tell you that Ed, my husband, said, wow, that was the best Disney trip ever. I would always do Disney if it was just like that. And when you hear what we did... You're going to be like, why did you spend all that money? That is exactly, (laughs) exactly, exactly what a friend has already said to Emma is, why would anybody go down there to walk around and eat? Buy down, spend spend money on hotels. (laughs) Well, we both had the Disney week. We both had the exact same Disney weeks, right? I mean. Mm -hmm. Well, but I mean, for me, I I will just share my specificness, the specificity. Thank you. To use the word. Uh, Big words as, today. The words, uh, since I am a doctor. Um, that my Disney week, obviously we were at Disneyland, uh, but specifically, I and I because I've complained about this on our podcast before, so I want to think that Disney listens to our podcast and made the correction mm-hmm. in that everywhere I went, especially yesterday once you guys left, and mm-hmm. uh, I was able to kind of like just go where I want, all over the place. Closing my thighs. Oh, Closing yeah, my yeah, size yeah, everywhere. yeah, yeah. And I'm like, did they like hear me when I said like you need to have more three X's? Because pretty much anything I wanted. Uh, and sometimes it took me a while to go to a couple places, but if they they had my size, which as a man of size is some, really hard to get. This itself, I bought uh, just yesterday uh, because uh, I. Uh, Wait, let me see it. Back up a little bit. Sorry if you're on the podcast. Okay, it is Steamboat Willie and Mickey Mouse. Actually, that's really cool. Yeah, which is funny because now I could have gotten it cheaper because it's in public domain, but I bought it from Disney. <laughs> that's the right thing to do because Disney doesn't have enough money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I could have got this for half the price on Etsy. Oh, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? But um, I, mean, yeah, I mean, we're going to talk about our Disney week, but did you have anything specific you wanted to bring up? In terms of like, other than our topic today, something from your week or from our trip that that you would like to mention? Uh, just that, and we're going to go into it on a different episode. But we both saw Inside Out too, oh, and so I thought it was absolutely genius. So we'll go deep dive into that movie. But if you haven't seen Inside Out too, I highly recommend it. Uh, I was impressed with the whole thing so we're we will talk about that in a future episode but i just want to let you know that if you haven't seen it yet go see it it's worth it it's so choice if you have the means i highly recommend i highly recommend it. it all right so yeah so we went to disneyland for my 54th birthday and basically spent the entirety of it eating and drinking cold brews and yeah, those cold brews were good. <laughs> so many cold brews. Okay, so this is a thing. Clear, cold brews because it was uh, not as hot as it gets there, but pretty hot for both of us who live in the, you live in the Pacific Northwest and I live in the California Bay Area. So I, we top out at like 75. Uh, uh, we are uh, over 90 today. So I was actually Ooh. cooler in California than we are here well, today. I'm flying to St. Louis tomorrow where apparently it's 98 with mm-hmm. 72% humidity. So I, this may be my last podcast. I expect that I will die. <laughs> I'll be thinking of you while I'm in the mountains of Colorado where it's not even supposed to get higher than 72. So <laughs> I'm, I'm not sad about that. Mm-mm, I'm not sad mm-mm, about mm-mm. that at all. 
So anyway, we did go to Disneyland. I again breaking my rule of saying never Disneyland in the summer. Um, but we were able to find the quiet places. Um and stay away from people. Now, mind you, in order to do that, we rarely went on any attractions. <laughs> well, and to be fair, like I, just as a comparison, we I met up with you on June nineteenth, which was your mm -hmm. birthday, but mm -hmm. it's also Juneteenth, which is mm -hmm. a, I think it's a national holiday. It, it's definitely it's a, a federal. It's a federal. California. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as a black person, it's a great holiday. I'm yeah, one hundred percent behind it. Um, and so a lot of people had the day off. And so on the 19th, it was pretty crowded. And then I was there on the 20th and 21st, and it was less crowded on the 20th and when you all left. And then yesterday, really, really pretty, uh, pretty. I mean, it was crowded, but, you know, I, I got on a lot of stuff after you guys left. And I left in, at three in the afternoon, and I still was able to ride a ton of stuff. So what did you ride the, when, after we left? So got into California Adventure first morning, did Soren um did uh tiki room obviously did runaway railway again did space mountain single rider did peter pan peter pan half hour uh wow. to get on um so i think i did uh jungle cruise jungle cruise so i was able to get a good number of rides in uh and california adventure was my opening park so that was all between 11 and the disneyland stuff was all between 11 and 3 so i was yeah. really rocking and rolling and i had to full sit down meal at uh, plaza Inn, so oh good we can talk about that too that's mm -hmm. great because i actually wanted to get there this time and didn't so that'll be good um i uh we can start let's start talking about all the fantastic food that we had on this trip um yeah because we didn't ride much but we as <laughs> emma put it as your daughter put it we would go over here and have coffee and hang out for an hour. And then we'd go to a different place and have lunch and hang out for an hour. <laughs> we'd go somewhere where there was air conditioning and have coffee and, and uh, have coffee and sit down for an hour. It was awesome. It was. I will tell you, I hands down, Ned said, this is why I want to always do trips like this. <laughs> Again, let me reiterate. We walked around and sat and had coffee. But let's, let's run food. through the list just so we can sort of tell people the breadth of places we ate. You all ate at Napa Rose, very fancy mm -hmm. restaurant in mm -hmm. uh, California, Disney's California. Uh, Grand uh, California. No, yeah, Grand California. We ate at the Carthay Circle, fancy restaurant yep. in California Adventure. Uh, we ate at uh, Tiana's Palace. At, at Tiana, we didn't have breakfast, but we ate at Tiana's pa Palace. We had breakfast at Jolly Holiday. And Jolly Holiday. I later on ate at Plaza Inn, which I've eaten there a million times before, but it's always good. I also ate at the uh, Magic Key Terrace. So we really, mm, went, mm -hmm. and then we went into the uh, the Disneyland Lounge at the Disneyland Hotel. So yes! we hit a, a broad breath of the I restaurant. Forgot about the Disneyland and, Lounge, um, Tropical Hideaway. Yeah. Oh yeah. You even caught some that I forgot about. So yeah, yeah. great, awesome. Well, should we start in chronological order? Sure. With, um, what we recommend and what we don't recommend, and yeah. and all of the things. So we met and we ate at Tiana's, and I've eaten at Tiana's before. You've eaten at Tiana's before. Mm -hmm. You didn't have a great first experience. I, I did not have a great first experience, but I ate like right after they opened. And if you listen to old episodes, you can hear my experience. But I I really want to chalk up my experience to it being a very new restaurant, and they I ate the gumbo, which I love, and they hadn't mixed it properly. Yeah. And so I ran into big chunks of dry gumbo powder, powder, and I, which I think I only know because I've made gumbo myself. And so I know how you make gumbo. And I'm like, oh, I know exactly how this happened. Uh, but it was, if you, you don't want to bite into a gumbo and get a dry powder mm -hmm. in your mouth. But that being said, I still think it's a good restaurant. The food was really good. So this time I had shrimp and grits. So when I got there on your birthday, because I flew in early that morning, First thing we did was go to Tiana's and, and have lunch. Now, what did you think of that one? What did you have? Um, I had I the had same thing I had. Yeah, I had the same thing I had the first time, which was the beef po' boy. And we went pretty <laughs> soon after it opened as well. Um, when we went, um, not only did we go soon after it opened, we went soon after it opened for the day. Like it opens at 10 a.m. And I think we got there at 1030 uh, or 11. And so at that time, the restaurant itself hadn't hit the lunch rush. Tiana was actually walking around 
um, that first time we went, I thoroughly enjoyed our my sandwich, my beef po' boy sandwich. We had the beignets. And uh, so I repeated that meal. I didn't love it as much the second time. Okay. Um, it just didn't. I, the first time I had it, it hit me as being so wonderful. And this time mm -hmm. it hit me as being the regular quick service kind of yeah. throw the meat on the sandwich um, kind of yeah, thing. And I do think now that it's all subtle, it's much more. I was expecting more of a table service quality with quick service sort of yeah. setting. But it's a quick service. And it's it a, a quick, quick service. service. It's fine. The shrimp and grits were good. Um, I think you guys' food was good. I'm not a fan of, I love beignets. I don't like filled beignets, so I didn't oh, have okay. the beignets. Uh, but on the whole, it was pretty good I, if your expectation is quick service. I love their chicory cold brew. So I didn't realize that cold brew had become a huge thing within the Disney parks. I'm not, I know Emma has been talking about it for a little bit, and I'm not sure when that was the. But, you know, Emma talks fat. a lot. I mean, come on. You can't, you can't. <laughs> I don't know where she gets it from. <laughs> um, but um, in my mind, so in my mind, what cold brew always was is basically cold coffee, either nitro brewed or just, you know, cold right. coffee. But Which I'm what, generally not a super fan of, but these were really good. I like, but what I didn't realize is that so many, not the chicory cold brew at, at Tiana's, that is actually pretty good. It's a little bit sweet, but not too much. But I didn't realize that so many of them around the park um have all the different sugars and sweetness and stuff in it some were much sweeter than others and so we can talk about those but the chicory cold brew at tiana's is maybe my perfect regular coffee mm. without a lot of fancy stuff in it but i just think it's good quality coffee um and so i really like that even if you just were in the mood for a cold coffee and i know you love your starbucks but I can have Starbucks anywhere, so I got to make use of the Disneyland. Let's cold be clear. Brews. My love of Starbucks isn't because it's Starbucks. It's because it's coffee. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Well, then I'm glad so, we had all when these I mean, other when chances. When we made our list, Starbucks is pretty much the only coffee that wasn't like. That is like, true. That is know, true. Just pot of something at Disneyland. Yeah. Now there's so many more coffee options. So Yeah, that's very true. And I forgot that before you got there, we, are, we actually had a little snack. We went straight to um, Minnie's and Mickey's Runaway Railway. I don't know why that's oh, so hard that, for me to I say. Because they have a lot of different food options in Toontown yeah. now that I didn't get a chance on this trip. How was mm -hmm. that? It was good. We went um, to Cafe Daisy and they had the Daisy Goody Goody Donuts, which were really just these little tiny um, mini blueberry glazed donuts with uh, fruity pebbles on them. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever of, uh, use of breakfast cereals in disney's there <laughs> oh yeah we'll get to that we'll yeah, get yeah. to that um but i wanted to read off what they had in their cold brew i did get their cold brew but wow was it sweet i wish we could order it with half the syrup i wish i could figure mm. out a way but because it's mobile order and they don't usually do special customizations yeah. but it had the cold brew it had almond syrup uh, topped with whipped cream, chocolate sauce, and toasted coconut. But it really, so it tasted like an Almond Joy, but it was almost sweeter than an Almond Joy. So it was really sugary, really, really sugary. Um, but if you like sugary coffees and like Almond Joys, go to Cafe Daisy and get that cold brew. Um, pretty good stuff. So Yeah, I didn't, I because I, I did run away Railway twice, but I mm -hmm. just kind of popped into Toontown f for that and popped back out. And I kept forgetting they had like uh, Cafe Daisy, which I wanted to try out. And for some reason, just completely slipped my mind. It's good. It's good if you just need a quick bite. It's got like hot dogs and pizza, but it's, it's actually kind of good quality. So I was impressed with, uh, with that. Um, so, okay. So what did we do after we went to Tiana's? I think we went straight well, then, over. <laughs> well, we hung out for a little bit. And then, because remember, we had two different dinners, your birthday night. Yeah. Do we have anything before dinner? I can't remember. What we did? Maybe we didn't. Um, we went over to California Adventure because my childhood best friend had texted me happy birthday um, before Al got there. She texted me, hey, happy birthday. And I responded back, hey, thanks. I'm at Disney. Big surprise. And she was like, oh, which Disney are you at? So she happened to be at Disneyland as well that day. So we were able to catch up with her. Oh, that was pretty that's fun. When we connect. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Right. So we actually went over to California Adventure to hang out. We hung out with them. They went to Ghirardelli's and got all the Ghirardelli goodness. Oh my was... god! And let's just say I don't think you did, or I did, or any of our party, our our section, the Ghirardelli desserts are so immense and ornate. I got a sweet tooth just looking at them. Yeah, I don't think they're for me. Yeah, it was every 
like if you if you if Bugs Bunny in a cartoon is eating a chocolate sundae, that's what the sundaes at Giardelli eat. Your <laughs> deli chocolate look like, and it just and I since my surgery I don't have a huge sweet tooth anymore, and oh my god those those things my eyes were just burning at the sugar coming off of those things. Yeah, it was definitely good, and but I did forget that on our way to Gary Deli we stopped by Pim's Test Kitchen where they had another cold brew. Emma got this one and I had a taste of super good cookies and cream cold brew. Oh, that's right, I never went back for that one. It was beautiful and it tasted pretty good too. Again, it was sweet, but you kind of expect that with a cookies and cream. So personally, yeah, right I would have rather I would have rather had that cookies and cream cold brew than the Ghirardelli's stuff. I just think the Gir- I mean, if you, I, I have friends who just dessert are like the sweet as as it can be, and that's if that's you, Ghirardelli's is perfect. Mm-hmm. It's just not me, so I'm not like down in Ghirardelli's. I just think like. As a matter of fact, I recommend it if you're just like I that or the uh, the uh, what's the place next to Salt and Straw in downtown Disney with the crazy shakes. Black, oh. Black Tap, I think it's called. Those two places. Mm-hmm. If you're a dessert person, mm-hmm. go there. I like how I'm you say. I like how you say next to Salt and Straw. Like Salt and Straw isn't a good salt and dessert. Straw, look, <gasps> I don't get the whole Salt and Straw. I thing. love it. It's like ice cream, but tastes like asparagus. I don't get it. It doesn't taste like asparagus. It's amazing. I mean, Ben and Jerry started with the fun flavors. Salt and straw yeah, just perfected but they were, them. Like, yeah, Ben and Jerry's flavors were like cookie dough. <laughs> That's yeah. a flavor I can get behind. It was uh, flavors we already loved, and they just put it into ice cream. Not like salt and straw, where it's like, do you like broccoli? We'll make it into an ice cream. I love salt and straw. They do. They uh, actually have a never whole... had salt and straw, so I don't know. Why would you even say that then? It's like Because so I good. go, oh, let me go try this ice cream. And then I walk up to it and they're like cheeseburger ice cream. And I'm like, no, thanks. No, they have regular ice creams too. They have an amazing salted caramel ribbon ice cream. My and I'm favorite. I'm lactose intolerant, so I don't want to mess around. They have it. a ton of dairy free. They have a ton of sorbets. And, um, but my favorite regular, they're regular flavors, and then they have all the specialty flavors. But my favorite regular flavor of salt and straw is pear and blue cheese. It is so good to have this oh, sweet pear ice cream and a, like a little chunk of blue cheese. Oh, so good. First of all, you take the worst, the worst fruit and the worst cheese. The and worst put them together. fruit? Pears oh, yeah. are amazing. Pears are like, okay, pears are like, what if we had an apple? in growing in an orchard next door and then you know three miles away there was another fruit that sort of vaguely maybe tasted like apple but not really no it does not That's what I, pear is. I do not understand your taste pears buds are at all pears, pears are, are the terrible. best pears are the pears best are like when you have a fruit but I, we don't want it to be too sweet or flavorful what are you talking about oh my god and pear cobbler oh Oh, don't even why start you, why it. Did you put the name pear and cobbler Coach together. Pears. Oh, oh. yum. You keep, you keep repeating the same problematic component pear. I hope that whoever's listening or watching this right now is going to go straight to the comments and go, Al, you are freaking insane because you, pears are you. amazing. I, I guarantee that there's more people who hate pears than like pears. Okay, you're on. We're doing a poll. Put that right there. I no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The, I, I need a awful. moment. We're going to have a pear episode because, oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. We'll we'll go on. I'll put the poll a out A pear there. episode. What, like the Disney pear conglomeration. I don't know where that's going. I don't even know. But anyway, we haven't even gotten to dinner yet. I know. So do you want to start with yours? Okay. Because you so went to Magic Key Terrace. Yeah, I went to Magic Key Terrace. for folks. So it was Andy's birthday. And Emma, Andy's daughter, and I were text messaging because we were going to be in at Disneyland on birthday. And I was like, did you make reservations? She was like, yes, I already made reservations, but I only made it for four. And so I was like, okay, cool. Don't change it because I didn't want to, like, have to do all the – I know how hard it is to get reservations at Disneyland. So, so don't change it. I'll just make my own reservation. So while they were going to Napa Rose, I made a reservation for Magic Key Terrace – for the dining package so that what the way the dining package works is you pay a set price. You get three course meal at the restaurant of your choice. You can do it in a number of different restaurants. Then you get uh, a reserved uh, viewing area for world of color. Originally I did it for Fantasmic, but then I moved it over to world of color. You can only do magic key terrace. If you're a magic key card holder. 
you can also only do magic ter- magic ter- magic key terrace magic key card old- holder but there are other restaurants at yeah. california adventure you could do the dining yeah. package with yeah um so it, you know so i had never been to magic key terrace which is you know it's a special area um uh, and i went and i had the chicken and i had this oh my god this raspberry uh uh macaron dessert thingy oh so good now here's the problem i have at every restaurant at every table at every sit down restaurant i go to i had a surgery a few years ago that makes my stomach very small and i can't eat a large quantity of food even though i very much love food which is why i had to have the surgery in the first place <laughs> and so i always have this problem when i eat especially when i'm done because i leave a lot of food on the on the plate and people think a i didn't like the meal and mm-hmm. or b i'm not finished yet mm-hmm. and so i had like five minutes before world of color was supposed to start and i'm like I'm done and I, I just really need to get a hold of you because I want to go see you know World of Color. But the meal was really good. I did not realize. So what I got was the fried chicken. I realized when I saw it on the menu that it's not just like your regular fried chicken. They take a Cornish hen, an entire Cornish hen, mm-hmm. and deep fry it. I knew it was going to be a Cornish hen. I just thought they were going to cut it into pieces like a regular chicken. But that actually, when you think about it, that doesn't make any sense. This is a way better way to do it. And it was super juicy and super flavorful. And oh my God, it, the, even the vegetables were good. It was really good. And the thing that I will say is when I used to live in LA in Orange County uh, and I had a, a, a local annual passport at the time, it wasn't uncommon to take dates to Disneyland. And this would be a great date place. It is really nice. Great views, nice and romantic if you want to take somebody up for a nice evening. Uh, it was, we were there um during the pride events Mm -hmm. um uh and so there were so many couples that were there uh for pride uh and like i i felt a little self-conscious because it's like the only single person just sitting there trying to eat my chicken and all these couples couples around me having a romantic dinner but it was really cool um oh my god it was so good and then you know i got to see world of color so it's pretty cool while you you all yeah were at napa rose yeah. Can I can I put a little side comment in here? Yeah. When we were when we were leaving, when we were getting ready to go, I you're gonna be mad at me for saying this, but I don't care. Um we saw oh god, I'm gonna throw up just saying it. We saw two people with red MAGA hats on oh my god. with ears on the MAGA hats and said Trump uh, in the back. Allows that to I don't even get it, okay? But whatever, these two people were in the park and not only did I want to throw up until I was like, you know what? I am so glad you are here at this moment because for the past two nights oh, yeah. or last night and tomorrow night, you're going to have pride night. It's pride everywhere. It, pride it, it, merchandise it, it, it everywhere. Later on that night when I was done and walking back to my hotel after you guys left and the, it was all the folks coming in for pride night, I was like, oh, dude, if you're here wearing that hat. You are so outnumbered right now. You are so outnumbered. And I was so like, cool. um, yeah, so I was pretty happy that if yeah. they were going to be there, that that's at least when they were there. And let me also say, yeah. and Andy and I talked about this. This is a different tangent from, because we do want to hear about Napa Rose. But the pride <laughs> gear that they had at Disney right now is so mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to... um I don't want to take a space from a community I'm not a part of or, or, uh, 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 culturally appropriate, a, a community that's not mine, but I so wanted a lot of that pride gear. It was really cool. You can still wanted... get it as a pride ally. No, I know. But I also, I'm very, I'm very, I try to be thoughtful about taking space from another community. Cause I, I, I have seen people try to be allies to my community and get it really wrong. And it's almost worse than somebody who just is like, I don't get it. I'm not going to try it. Somebody who thinks they're doing the right thing and is getting it so, so wrong. Um, well, <laughs> it was it was very cute and very fun to see all the people dressed up and just being, I mean, everybody was happy everywhere, except for me when I saw those two people with the red hats. But um, anyway, okay, so I digress, but I was happy that they were there at that time. Um, so Napa Rose, Emma surprised me with a reservation for Napa Rose. It was been on my bucket list forever. Um, I but, then ruined, yeah. Now, had you been to Napa Rose before? No, this is my first time. 
Oh, I didn't know. So, I've been before. No, 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 no. This is my first time going to Napa Rose. There's a, I, yeah, back and forth. Uh, so expensive meals are very fun, but sometimes when I'm at Disney, I'm like, you know what? We're spending so much money on everything else. I don't know that I want to do this, but Napa Rose right. has been open forever, even when we lived there. So I don't have an excuse for that time, but whatever. I must surprise me. So we had the reservations for Napa Rose. Now, and you at, have to go and get chains because it's a dress. Mm-hmm, your place. There's a dress it's, code. It's a little bit of work. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there is, you can do it two ways. You can do the whole Vinter's meal where the chef picks everything for you. And uh, I think that meal is 150 per person, which really isn't bad once That's you see everything else. Pretty good. I if would, would want to more. Yeah, if you want to pair or if you want to get the wine pairings for all of it, the flight of wines, it's another $90. Um, however, I, because we had been walking around and sitting and doing nothing but eating and drinking all day, and I it was wasn't very warm. <laughs> it was, I wasn't really like starving. So that would have been a waste of money to do that. So we all decided to go a la carte instead. And what I loved about that is that we were able to try each other's meals and things like that. I didn't even want a big entree. So they have their starters, their second courses, their entrees and their desserts. And I just, I couldn't do all that food at that time, which was kind of a bummer because I wanted to try everything. Um, But I, what I ended up doing and Emma ended up doing the same thing is we got a starter and then we just got kind of two secondary courses um, instead of one big entree that allowed us to try more food and um, it wasn't so heavy. Uh, but we still got to try Fernando's and Ed's. So we felt so like what, we had a what, good Do you play. remember what specifically you... Yes. Yeah. So let me get into that. So to start off with, um, Fernando had the scallop, the sauté diver scallop, mm-hmm. which was probably the most beautiful scallop I had ever seen in my life. <laughs> How can a scallop be beautiful? I don't know, but it was gorgeous. He and Ed both tried that and said it was delicious. I ordered asparagus with um, a hollandaise sauce. Now, oh, interesting. you might be wondering, how good must a $26 plate of asparagus be? It's it a must vegetable. It have $20 taped to the bottom of the plate for it to be any good to me. Fernando was even like, I just can't justify ordering a $26 plate of asparagus. But it was the best freaking asparagus I've ever had in my whole life. I loved it. I don't know where they got their asparagus. We're not talking about little tiny strings of asparagus. We are talking honking stalks cut up with this Meyer lemon hollandaise sauce on it. Ooh, that sounds good. I could have had that for my meal. I could have eaten the asparagus for my meal. It was so good. I There you go. I'm raving about asparagus, but it was with really good. hollandaise sauce, it would be vegetarian, but not vegan. Interesting. That is true. That is true. I just wanted a little bit of asparagus and I got it, but it was the way they presented it, but the actual asparagus was really super good. So I was, I was pleased with my $26 asparagus for that. Um, I'll talk about the cocktails and stuff in a moment for the second courses. Uh, okay. Now this, uh, Emma and Ed and I all had the mushroom cappuccino. So it's like, Oh my God. And you guys were raving about frothy. Yeah, it's this mushroom bisque with a uh, thyme froth on top. Now, I thought it was good. Emma thought it was good. Ed goes so far as to say it's the best food he's ever had. Not yeah, just best Ed was, soup. Like the whole next day, he was talking about how good the, the soup was. This is what my husband is raving about. He's raving about the fact that we didn't go on any rides and just walked around. And, and, you, and you that had he soup. had mushroom soup. So that was Ed's trip in a... <laughs> in a nutshell, but he is raving <laughs> about that. Um, both Emma and I got the herb potato gnocchi with the lamb ragu on it. Um, that was our entree, so it was another just a little portion, but yeah. it that served but again, well for our entree. And this is probably good advice for people who are planning like these trips to explore some of these places to eat. We did explore a lot of places to eat, but when you do that, you're not going to want to have like a big sit down meal because mm-hmm. you've been eating a little bit all day. Exactly. Exactly. So it was good. Now, that being said, once um, I so I wasn't hungry for the main courses, but uh, Fernando ended up getting the Maple Leaf Farms duck breast and it had sunflower root and cherry hibiscus sauce on it. And I had a bite of it. And had I gotten that entree, I would have been very happy. It was so good. It was so good. It was that was some of the best 
food I'd ever had. Um, I, I, as you guys were talking about it, my thing is, and I mentioned this, I duck is either the best thing you've ever had or the worst thing you've ever had when people don't cook it right. If people don't cook it right, it, that all that this is too fatty. Oh yeah, cook right, and the the skin. Oh, it's the best. And the cherry sauce on top just was so good. So. If I went back there and they still had that on the menu, I think I would like even throw out the starters and just have that entree. It Ooh, was sounds, so good. I right. ended up having the filet mignon and it had a poblano pepper uh, coulis and the fresh blackberries on it, yeah. which was good. But if you don't like any spice, I'm I have like this. I yeah, well, it's poblano can't pepper. do spice. Yeah. yeah, I know. And so it had, but it wasn't heavy. It was just like a little tiny bit in the background. Um, but it was, but I'm glad I didn't get it because that would have been too much for me. He loved it. He thought it was great. Um, but it was just a little, like one bite was enough for me. And, um, so I would have been happier with the duck breast should I had ordered the entrees. Um, we got dessert. I got the toasted angel food cake with raspberries and rose water sorbet. And the angel food cake was like this, just like a little rectangle of to the, just like it says toasted angel food cake and i'm like i've never thought about toasting this before but now i want to do that all the time because it was so good um oh that's a good idea oh it was oh that sounds good really really yummy um fernando and emma shared the wine country goat cheesecake which was hmm. so good but there's no way i could have eaten all of it it was very rich and then ed had the chocolate creme brulee um which was oh. also very good they oh, were like, oh. it was it was good they love their cocktails i had a glass of wine um but they love their cocktails and so if you look and i can put this in i'll put the menu link in our show and a notes lot of these, just so folks know our instagram has a lot some some of these meals we'll probably put the rest of them up over the next couple of days but uh pictures of a lot of this stuff we're talking about that's a great thing about the disney uh website disney's website you can go into their whatever park you're going to and look at the restaurant and they have the menu right there for you with the prices, which is so great that they do that. Um, and so you can see really everything, but their cocktails were really yummy. I had taste of all of them. And then I had a glass of wine and, and we called it good, but a dinner like that, uh, it, you know, takes a long time. So when you do have a full day at the park and then you go to Napa Rose for dinner, you know, you're talking another two hours of that. So, just beware. It's a great, great romantic spot. Oh, yeah. Um, but you have to plan for, well, A, you I would say, yeah. But I, I would center, if you're going to do a Napa Rose, uh, I would center your night around it. Because again, yeah. it's a fairly fancy restaurant. You're going to want to go change into something nice. It's definitely a shirt and tie type of place. Um, and then after a meal of that size, I doubt you're going to want to go, you know, jump on Space Mountain. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's going to be your night. Yep. And that was pretty much it for us. So, so I was good. I would, would I, I would go again. I would go again. Um, yeah, we've been I didn't realize you hadn't been. I, I went like 15 years ago when I was mm -hmm. dating uh, a, a lovely young woman and we went. Um, and I thought it was great then. I, I you know, and now I, I would definitely go back. I, I just, it's a lot of money. <laughs> but honestly, the, I didn't know the Ventners was 150. That's actually less than I would think. Mm -hmm, and I, mm -hmm. I'm not a drinker, so the the added sort of ninety bucks for the the wine course, I may or may not pay. I mean, I want it. I'd probably want to do it just for the for the uh, experience. But I'm also not like I feel like I wouldn't appreciate what I'm paying for for the for the wine course as much well, as. And I don't need that. I would need the whole flight of wines. I would do good with just a glass of wine. Right yeah. for the whole the whole thing, but also I'm at a point right now in my life where I actually don't need the alcohol. I mean, people who know wine and love wine, it, yeah, it just thing, enhances right? their meal. Um, but and lately, Napa Rose is known for their wine. List yeah. Too. Oh my so, god. Like I, I feel like I feel a little intimidated, like ordering wine there because I don't even really. I, I, you know me. I drink like twice a year. Right. Mm -hmm. And so for me to spend a lot of money on a glass of wine is a waste of both the wine and the money. Right. Well, you know, uh, Sarah, my college roommate and friend of yours, she works for um, wineries or a specific winery now um, in Napa. And so she was saying that her wines are represented there. Well, not hers, but the company she works yeah. for are represented there now, too, as well as Club 33. So 
That's kind of exciting. Yeah, um, so when, anyway, whenever you come to the bay, we should go up and do wine tasting. Oh, that's point. a good idea. You're that's a good idea. For the bay quit lying. So okay, so that was dinner, and then the next morning, uh, I met you all for breakfast at Jolly Holiday. Jolly Holiday, mm-hmm. uh, where I had a uh, cinnamon roll. Yes, you I did. I had breakfast at my because I looked. I knew we were meeting at Jolly Holiday, and I was like, I because of my diet, I need a little protein, so I just went down to the breakfast in my hotel and ate a couple of sausages, and then came over and had a cinnamon roll. And the cinnamon roll was great; it was lovely. But I a little bit of sugar can overwhelm me, so I only ate like a quarter of it. But that quarter was fantastic. <laughs> well, I can't. I had the egg, egg and bacon croissant, um, so that was good too. And again, another cold brew which I'll read off the menu description. This one, again, a little too sweet for me. But if you're a sugar person, this was a chimney sweet cold brew. It was cold brew coffee with hickory smoked syrup. So that was interesting. Oh, I wish I would have known that. I would have tried that. Chocolate and caramel sauces, cream, and smoked salt sugar sprinkle. Um, The smokiness was kind of lost with the sweet to me. Um, Mm. I I thought the sweet was way... What I'd be looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Next time I go, I'm going to try to have that. So it was good if you like something sweet. Um, the chimney sweet cold brew. So yeah, oh, that smoky coffee sounds good. I have not ever gotten food at Jolly Holiday. I mean, sorry, gotten food, but more like treats at Jolly right. Holiday. So never like a meal, and it wasn't like huge. It wasn't a huge deal. And you think, well, go to Starbucks or go to Seven Eleven, and you can get an egg and bacon croissant. Yeah, but, but it's different. This was a little bit. This was nicer. It wasn't just like well, especially microwaved. If they make the croissant there, like mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you could tell a difference. So it's not your microwaved meal. Um, it was actually a good egg and good bacon and good. So right. that's good to know too, because we don't usually eat breakfast in the park. We usually eat breakfast before we get there. So knowing that now, kind of excited about that. Yeah, I will say, I like to get there early, but I the breakfast options have not, and maybe I just haven't tried enough of them, have not improved as much as lunch and dinner options at the park. So I would love mm-hmm. to be better. And more thorough breakfast options. Well, in, the thing, the park. and the thing is, though, too, is that if you spend your time at breakfast in the park, then you're wasting prime right. ride. Uh, you yeah, know, because nobody's the at the park yet. The mm-hmm. What's the point of getting there at road drop exactly. if you're going to run to something, right? Yeah. Well, if you're us, I guess the point is sitting down with your friends and chatting and having coffee and <laughs> and more food because we did a lot of that. We did a yeah, lot of that. We left Jolly Holiday. To walk over to we to get another cold brew. Yes. And Batu. Yes. At Galaxy's Edge. Yes. And that one was the cold brew black calf. And uh, this one was nice because it was the cold brew coffee with a uh, sweet cream cheese foam and a uh, chocolate. Well, they were cocoa puffs. They were on cocoa top. puffs. Yeah. So here, and I did Ed- have one of these. This, this was delightful, which is one of my favorite <laughs> words for something. This is it was a delightful midday when it was hot outside refresher and then there's also cocoa puffs yeah i will say it was my favorite one um that wasn't so i love the one at tiana's for just a regular coffee but for a sweet coffee this one was my favorite it wasn't too awful sweet and had those cocoa puffs and uh one thing okay so here are the complaints about it ed loved it too but he said when you want your perfect sip of a cocoa puff and and the coffee, coffee. Yeah. the ice, the huge ice cubes get in the way. So you end up like with a mouthful of ice cube and cocoa puff and, and coffee. And so. he's not wrong. Cause you would, you would, you'd have a few solid things in your mouth. You'd be like, oh, yeah. let me crunch on these cocoa yeah. puffs. And you would, except one of them would be an ice cube. And you're like, well, yeah. that's a different crunch. Yeah. That's a different crunch. <laughs> and then there was, my friend Rima was with us at the time and she's like, uh, wouldn't the cocoa puffs get soggy? And all of us are like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We want sake cocoa. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> that was super good. Um, what do we do after? I mean, do we have? I'm trying to think if we get any more food, or did we go straight over to California Adventure again? Oh, we did because we went to Carthay Circle. Carthay Circle, yeah. So, do you want to talk about your meal there? We didn't go upstairs this time. We went to the we Al Fresco the Lounge. Now, the, mm-hmm. the way it works at Carthay Circle is. There's the lounge on the first floor, which is more of a bar and snacks area. And then for my birthday a few years ago, we went to the upstairs area, which is a full restaurant, sit down mm-hmm. restaurant. So when Emma and I were talking, 
I was like, okay, you've got reservations for birthday night. So let me get a reservation for like the next day. Cause you guys were going to leave in that evening. Uh, and we had had such a good time at Carthage Circle, so I found a reservation for Al Fresco because online everybody was saying, "Oh, you got to do Al Fresco," because I had never, I we had done upstairs, I'd done downstairs. Uh, so we got a reservation for twelve thirty, um, and it's mostly known for its cocktails, which I think you guys had some cocktails, which you can tell us about. And then it's more like appetizers, and so Emma and I both got the these pork belly bows, which were wonderful. Mm-hmm. And I wish I would have gotten that. You had lettuce rolls and it had the meatballs. How were the mm-hmm. lettuce rolls? The lettuce wraps were good. They were Vietnamese twice cooked chicken lettuce wraps. And they were good. They and they good. like when I saw them, I was like, oh, maybe I should have gotten that. That looked They were good. spicy. And so anybody who even loves a little bit of spice would love these. I just had a hard time with spice. Because I like a little bit of spice. I don't like overwhelming like spice, it. but I like a little bit. It wasn't overwhelming. It was definitely a little bit. Ed said his meatballs were spicy as well. Those look amazing. But if they I had to go back for all of our meals, I would have gotten that bao bun again. I want to go back for that bao bun. That it was bao bun. So good. It was cooked perfectly. because It, it was pork so belly. good. And a lot of times with pork belly, which is really just thick bacon, but if you don't cut, make it right, the balance of fat and meat can mm-hmm. be like you can taste like if you don't do it right it can taste like oh i'm just eating fat and it didn't taste like that at all no it was so oh, good and the flavoring so they used on it so mm-hmm. amazing and that's my experience like it was with the the pickle there's uh, i can't remember it was pi- kimchi was on it and it wasn't really spicy although emma thought it was spicy. i didn't find it terribly spicy it was so much flavor though oh so good yeah i would get that again in a heartbeat and i wasn't drinking that day so i got the um rose water um, I had, that was two rose water things I had. I had the rose water sorbet at Napa, and then I had a rose water kind of sparkling co- or uh, sparkling water, uh, no alcohol cocktail, which was good. <laughs> and you had uh, alcohol free mojito. I did, which was actually really nice, really mm-hmm. refreshing. On a it, that day was warmer than the day before, mm-hmm. um, and we were sat right under the air conditioning and our server was terrific. I mean, it was mm-hmm. a, a lovely, a lovely uh, experience at the Carthay circle, but yeah. yeah. I, and again, for our listeners, I'm not, I'm not like, I'll never drink alcohol. It's just generally, I'm always going to pick probably a non-alcoholic option more. I just never really, for a lot of reasons, never really developed a taste for alcohol. Uh, so, uh, and then because I'm stubborn, you know, in college, everybody just makes you drink alcohol, which made me not, on purpose because you can't tell me what to do. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I thought it was lovely. And it's, I mean, it was, let's just say we were there. I was there for three days and it was in the eighties every day I was there. Yeah. Yeah. I will say though, too, people are, there's a lot of people that are not drinking that are looking for good alternatives. They don't want to just have, you know, an iced tea yeah. all the time. They're looking for and the honestly, flavorful alternatives without I'm the also, alcohol. Like I stopped drinking soda regularly some years mm-hmm. ago and soda is like really super sweet and super heavy. And I, mm-hmm. I really want something that's a little lighter and not so thick, especially when it's warm out. Right. I don't want that thick soda syrupy taste. Right. Well, they did a great job. Um, they did a great job. Disney does with their non-alcoholic mm-hmm. options. I will say so. That is, um, that was excellent. We we must have done something after. We well, uh, went to the Carthay. Disneyland. Um, oh, you know what? Lounge in the evening, but did we do something before then? No, it was the day before. I thought it was Thursday, but the day before we had had that. We went to Pim's Test Kitchen again, and we got oh. that quantum pretzel. That's right. That was an amazing soft pretzel. It was a Bavarian style pre- soft pretzel. It had this amazing beer cheese sauce that was in it. I was. I think I the was... pretzel is if you have a group of people, it's the perfect thing for a group of people. Because mm-hmm. you think, oh, it's just a pretzel. It's massive, and you it's can't pretty eat big. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just can't. Mm-hmm. And again, really good non-alcoholic options there too. Mm-hmm. I know that some people got a cocktail. I ended up getting. The proton I had a non-alcoholic punch. thing with like uh, pop rocks, pop rocks on it. It was really cool. <laughs> so that was really good too. Yeah, and so I think that after so Carthay and then what, we did do Star Tours. Star Tours has the new uh, since April. They have the new characters mm-hmm. in Star Tours now. We got Ahsoka. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would love to go back and see um, 
Andor, uh, Cassian Andor, and um, the Mandalorian, I guess, is supposed to be in yeah. there too. So I, I, I think I did see the the Razor Crest in one scene, like in the background, but we didn't see the full Mandalorian kind of thing. Yeah, and but I like what they updated. Those that I've seen all the way through, so I gotta I gotta go catch up on my Star Wars. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I've watched the first episode. I, I don't know if you realize this. I, the last four years, I've spent, like, <sighs> away from the world in books. So I, I have a lot of pop culture. I didn't even say that, but there's a lot of random YouTube videos that you happen to I know. pop up and with. So. You know why? Because that was the only thing my brain, when it wasn't dissertation, could only work in, like, five to seven minute segments. Like, Great. literally, I would try to watch, like, an hour-long thing. And after a few minutes, I'd be like, I don't know what's going on in this thing here. You're but, like a middle schooler. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's I don't know awesome. how to talk to girls. I need <laughs> to remind myself to put deodorant on. It's, yeah, 100% like that. <laughs> no, it's a, yeah, but that, it was good. It was good. And then we went over to, where do we end up? Oh, do we end up going to Disneyland Lounge? Uh, yeah. For, for not, now this is really not. Liked. I liked it too. I liked it too. Emma had found this. It is not on the website. It's not on the mm-hmm. Disneyland website. I'm not sure why, but it's right by Goofy's Kitchen and the Disneyland Hotel. It's right next door. It's called mm-hmm. the Disneyland Lounge. It's it's kind of dark, foresty environment. Yeah. It feels very much like just a hotel bar kind of thing in the Disneyland Hotel. It's right by where Park, uh, uh, right by Goofy's Kitchen, where the old steakhouse used to be. Yeah. Um, but I thought it was, especially in the middle of a crazy day, like it was mm-hmm. just a nice place to sit down and relax, comfortable and chair. And live music. Live, live music. music. Which they had. It was really cool because it's Pixar Fest while we were there and they had a, a sort of a tribute to soul. So it was uh, a history of black music and jazz and stuff like that. It was really cool. Um, yeah. Although most of the songs they were playing were just your jazz standards that weren't necessarily written by yeah. black people. But I didn't, I didn't care. The music was cool. Although we had been out in the sun all day, so the music was like very nice live jazz, and I almost fell asleep like three times. <laughs> it was very, very relaxing. I know, but we just had, you know, we had some snacks and just pizza and truffle fries, but it was good. It was enough to to split, to share. And then uh, that was it for our Disney treats, but then you stayed and went... What did you have that night? Did you go that to... Night, I ended up just having snacks in the park and then okay. on the California Pizza Kitchen for dinner because oh, okay. by the time I got back in, I went and I rode something. And by the time I got out of that, I was like, I'm not going to have a chance to like really eat because the park was closing for uh, Pride, the Pride mm-hmm. event. And so I was like, I think I got a churro and then went to the California Pizza Kitchen by my... Uh, by my hotel because i you know i i love their kung pao spaghetti and i and i knew i knew that i had to go on the way to my hotel because if i got to my hotel i would collapse and not eat mm-hmm. anything. uh but the next morning i got up went back to the park because i was leaving that day i uh, had breakfast in my hotel but i had lunch at the plaza Inn, and i had what i think is the classic disneyland like table service lunch which mm-hmm. is the fried chicken at plaza inn mm-hmm. and we ate a lot of good food over our three days there and i tried a lot of new things that i'd never tried before but let me tell you best meal i had <laughs> the fried chicken at plaza inn well, it's, it's comfort so good food. it's comfort it's food so for flavorful. sure like and here's the thing i like many americans grew up on fried chicken uh i make pretty decent fried chicken myself and so my sort of mark for fried chicken is it's got to be better than what I could make on my own at home. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's way better than what I can make at home. Like, it is awesome. It's so good. Juicy, moist, full of flavor. I even like the vegetables. They give you green beans. They're really good. The mashed potatoes. It's just, oh, I was thinking about it after I left. Also, because I can't eat very much, I couldn't finish it. And I'm sitting there going, do you think they take me let me take half eaten chicken on the plane probably not um, <laughs> say what so it's good. not liquid you can take I'm food on the saying, plane i didn't want to have that conversation with tsa um, <laughs> but if you've never because it's one of those things i've talked to a lot of people who've never done that because it's not like plaza Inn isn't one of those places that people talk about all the time and i'm like you just can't make reservations you still can't, can't make, make reservations. reservations well i didn't realize this is the first time i went like i got there like 10 minutes before noon i thought they were open they didn't open till noon and there was a line. 
Yeah. And I was like, I've never been to Plaza Inn where there was a line, but there was a line and I didn't want to wait in line because it was hot. So I just sat down and looked at uh, my phone for 10 minutes. And then it took me another 10 minutes because that line had gotten super long. Okay. <laughs> uh, but there's so much seating there that it, it was just they had to get the people through the line. And then once that line sort of went down, I just, and there's still plenty of seating. I sat in the shade. It was lovely. Oh, so good. I've been thinking about that chicken. I had it literally, what, 27 hours ago? So good. Well, I'll tell you, when we were leaving, I said, um, we had, we had made plans to go to the parks after D23 when we go back in August. And I was thinking yesterday as I was leaving, I'm like, you know what? I don't, I'm good. I don't need to go to the parks or anything. But now that we're talking about all this food, now I want to go eat for more food. I'm telling you, like I'm, I'm, when we go for D23, it's, and mostly because at the end of summer, things are really busy for my work. Um, so I, it's probably better for me to get back here right after D23, but I could spend another day. I think, I think a day, and Ed kept saying this, doing like a coffee crawl and a food crawl at Disney, perfectly valid way to spend a day at Disney. And that's kind of what we did. We kind of did a two day mm -hmm. food crawl. <laughs> yeah. Disney. Yeah. And it was lovely. Yeah. Yeah. And so many food places and we haven't hit. So and let me tell you, when I was walking around yesterday, I was like marking out the places that I love that we didn't go. We didn't go to Cafe Orleans. I love Cafe Orleans. Uh, I, I'm weird. I like Golden uh, Hungry Bear Cafe. Uh, I didn't get a Ronto Roaster at uh, 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 um, Docking Bay. Docking Bay. Uh, we did. We didn't mention. We did get the uh, go to the uh, uh, Tropical Hideaway. And you all mm -hmm. had uh, what was the, the uh, uh, Dole Whip thing you had? I just had the strawberry pineapple swirl, which is lovely. Yeah, uh, it was what, a really was good. It was a pineapple um, and coconut float. So the mm -hmm. pineapple dole up in a coconut, like a blue coconut drink. Um, so and oh, with strawberry lava on top. So. Oh, that's right, themed after uh, lava. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was good too. Yep, but that's what we did. We did our own coffee and food crawl, which, you know, there's a million places now that I want to go back to. And Emma said there's one more cold brew that I didn't get, and that was the pistachio one at Hungry Bear. So definitely going to have to go back and get that. So, Well, and I will say for our trip, although I think it's probably not going to be the case for much longer, most of the back half of New Orleans Square was closed off because Haunted Mansion's closed. Uh, okay. Tiana's Buy Your Adventure is still coming. So yeah, Hungry Bear and Harbor are the kind of the only things open, and I'm pretty sure Pooh is closed. So that whole back section is closed. And you just reminded me, Pooh is Pooh wasn't closed. You can go back there, but um, oh, you okay. did just remind me that how can I forget? I had and you tried the cookies at Columbia Harbor House that everybody oh, was right. raving about. People were standing in line for hours to get these chocolate chip cookies. Meh. They tasted like you know what they tasted like. Remember when we were kids and what was the Mrs. Fields cookies? I, and that's totally what I thought. That's totally what, they what I thought. Like to me, I'm like they were like Mrs. Fields cookies. <laughs> don't that's get me wrong. Like, no, I like Mrs. Fields cookies, but I wouldn't yeah. wait hours for them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's totally what I was thinking. I was like, oh, these are just like the Mrs. Fields or whatever, and it was just yeah. like, and I'm like, oh my god, people were waiting for ever it's like the Disney line thing. was forever. They put so much more importance on random stuff. I mean, come on. That's like their gingerbread cookie. People were waiting forever for their gingerbread cookie at Christmas. So I'm like, yeah, it's good, but it's a gingerbread cookie. Now, if it's something I can't get anywhere else, like I'll wait for the Dole Whips. But for cookies that I can get at the mall? No. Nah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a Mrs. Fields at the mall that near me, if I'm not mistaken. I've been there. There might. All right. We'll have fun with that. Have fun yeah. with that. Hmm. So. Mm. anyway all right well i'm sure that we have um opinions by people watching slash listening to this so make sure you let us know what you're thinking on youtube or you can go to our social media sites at dueling disney uh, if you're interested in really getting uh deep into the conversation join our facebook group at dueling disney community duelists and you can um, apparently fill out a poll of whether pears are a good fruit or not. Um, but also tell us what you think about the restaurants we talked mind. about. And um, the restaurant we should hit in our next coffee and food crawl. 
Monsieur et Madame, it is time to say adieu. But we hope you will always remember the amazing things which happened here in Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room and on the Dueling Disney Podcast.